Today it has been revealed that senior European Union officials said this about the SNP's plan to rejoin the EU. This is a direct quote. No euro, no membership. But that is not what Nicola Sturgeon's economic paper from last week said. So who is lying to the Scottish people? The European Union or Nicola Sturgeon? First Minister. Well, Presiding Officer, firstly, before I come directly uh, to the issue uh, that Douglas Ross raises, let me just uh, say this. Uh, the party that told us in 2014 uh, that independence would take away our European Union membership and then went on to take us out of the European Union, I don't think will have any credibility whatsoever yeah. on matters European from here on in. I read, I read the article uh, in The Times uh, this morning with interest, good journalism as always and as would be expected, uh, but based on, I think, four uh, unnamed sources. I'm not saying uh, they have no legitimacy, but I am going to uh, give some named uh, sources. In the words of Douglas Ross, direct quotes. Uh, so here's the first one. Not all countries in the European Union will join the Euro. Uh, former Prime Minister David Cameron. <laughs> they are not going to force us to join the Euro. Uh, highly respected former Labour MEP David Martin. No country has ever been obliged to join the Euro. Graham Avery, former senior advisor at the European Policy Centre. Uh, just yesterday, uh, here is the Deputy Director at the Centre for European Reform. I'm not a Scottish nationalist, but Euro membership doesn't get forced on member states. Um, and lastly, well, here we go. Thank you. Douglas Ross doesn't want to listen to any of that. I, I know he often flip-flops on whether he agrees with Tory leaders or not, but clearly he's now disagreeing with David Cameron as well. But here, here is another one, uh, presiding officer. Uh, there is, and I uh, quote, uh, I'm quoting here, no intention of forcing countries to join the euro if they are not willing or not able to do so. That was the former president of the European Commission itself. Now, if quotes are not enough, how about hard evidence, presiding officer? Uh, many countries in the European Union uh, still uh, use their own currency. Uh, Sweden, well, name them. Uh, Bulgaria, Czechia, Hungary, Poland, Romania and Sweden, a member state since 1995, still uses its own currency. So there you are, presiding officer. Direct quotes and hard evidence. Finally, though, if Douglas Ross wants to have this debate, I welcome it. So here's my challenge to Douglas Ross. Let's have a referendum and have these debates with the Scottish people. Douglas Ross. Desperate, desperate stuff from Nicola Sturgeon. Because, of course, what she didn't quote... Well, they're all applauding that point that it was desperate stuff from Nicola Sturgeon because they know she didn't quote that it is a criteria for countries entering into, not currently in the European Union, to join up to the Euro. Because Nicola Sturgeon has been pretending that her plan to break up the United Kingdom would mean Scotland rejoins the EU. But that's not true. The reality, according to these multiple European Union officials is a Scotland separated from the United Kingdom would be refused entry unless it agreed to join the Euro. So the First Minister's big plan is actually to break Scotland away from by far our biggest trading partner, partner the United Kingdom, with nothing to show for it in the middle of a global inflation and cost of living crisis. And she wants to put families and businesses through that in the next 12 months. First Minister, how can that possibly be your priority right now? First Minister. Well, firstly, Presiding Officer, uh, what Douglas uh, Ross refers to as global inflation mm -hmm. just happens to be higher in the UK than in most of the rest of the globe yeah. right now because of the economic and financial incompetence of the Conservative government. But let's, let's return to the matter at hand. The criteria. Uh, that he refers to, which is actually uh, the, the Maastricht criteria, 
uh, was actually in place when Sweden joined the European Union uh, 27 years ago. But Sweden, kind of proving the point, kind of proving First the Minister, point First that Minister, I am making. First Minister, if you could just give me a moment, please. Yeah. I'd like to be clear that I would wish everyone in the chamber and beyond to hear the First Minister and indeed whoever should be speaking at any point. Douglas Ross is uh, from a sedentary position shouting, but what about the euro? It is the euro position I'm talking about. Sweden is not in the euro. And of course, the President of the European Commission, when he said, and let me quote it again, there is no intention of forcing countries to join the euro if they are not willing to do so. Uh, that was in 2017, not 27 years ago. Unfortunately, the direct named uh, quotes uh, of the people uh, that I have quoted today and the hard evidence uh, from other EU member states disproves the point that Douglas Ross uh, is seeking to make today. It is utterly pathetic and desperate. But if he wants to put it to the test, if he wants to put it to the test, Let's allow the Scottish people to look at all of these things and make a decision in a referendum. Uh, that, after all, is the democratic thing uh, to do. And let's not forget, presiding officer, uh, that the future the vast majority of people in Scotland want, which is one inside the European yeah. Union, is now only available to Scotland if we become independent. Douglas Ross, what is utterly pathetic and desperate, and she's fiddling away through her folder, so if she can find this, this will be great, is a quote from someone that says a country seeking to enter into the European Union doesn't have to join the Euro, because all her selective quotes have been about countries that are already in the EU. But when we need the focus on funding on our front line here in Scotland, the Scottish Government has poured resources and taxpayers' money into an economic paper that the EU rubbished in less than a fortnight. So let's just run through the facts of that flimsy plan. The First Minister has no idea how to tackle the deficit. Not a word on all of the taxes she'll have to hike. Silent on all of the public Mr. services. Ross. Mr Ross, if you just give me a moment. I'd like to hear Mr Ross, please. Well, they don't want to hear this, so let me start again. Let's run through the facts on Nicola Sturgeon's flimsy plan. The First Minister has no idea how to tackle the deficit. Not a word on all of the taxes she will have to rise. Silent on the public services that will be cut. And she wants to separate Scotland from our biggest trading partner bringing in, in her own words, a hard border, risking 500,000 Scottish jobs that depend on UK trade, abandon the pound, has no plan to pay for pensions and no security for people's mortgages. So let me ask the First Minister this. Why? Why, oh, why does the First Minister... Sorry, Mr Ross, Mr Ross... I am not allowing this behaviour to continue. We will hear each and every member who is entitled to be heard. All voices should be heard in this chamber. I'm sure we would all wish to afford one another that courtesy. Please continue. So with your flimsy plan and the disaster it's going to create for Scotland, why, oh why, do you insist on dragging our country through this when you should be uniting us to deal with the challenges our country faces? First Minister. All I'd say, Presiding Officer, I think Douglas Ross should perhaps reflect on the fact there that people across the chamber were not laughing uh, with him. Uh, however, it is extremely serious. So let's just take point by point. Uh, Douglas Ross says we want to abandon the pound. Uh, Douglas Ross is from the party that over recent times has wrecked the pound. <laughs> He talks about, and he has the nerve, the nerve to stand up in this chamber and talk about security for mortgage payers from the party that over recent weeks 
brought mortgage funds to with it, pension fu uh, security for pensions <laughs> that brought pension funds within hours of collapse. Yeah. He calls yeah. on Thanks, security for mortgage payers, the party that, because of its incompetence, has sent mortgage rates soaring yeah. through yeah. the roof. Absolutely. That is the reality of Scotland within the United Kingdom. And then he's also got the nerve to talk about deficits. Remember, deficits right now are created as a result of Westminster decisions. And we are about to find out uh, later in November uh, the price Scotland is going to have to pay in the form of another wave of Tory austerity, uh, probably in the form of tax rises, uh, to uh, see how the Tories are going to deal with the deficit they have created. Independence is an alternative uh, to the economic mess that the Tories have created. And finally, on the euro, I note that when Douglas Ross doesn't like the quotes and we doesn't like the, the countries that form the evidence here, he just calls for other quotes and for other uh, countries. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, of course, and this is where, this is where Douglas Ross, Ross also has uh, a nerve, because you know we're getting close to the point, again because of Tory incompetence, uh, where the euro may well soon be worth more than the pound. Uh, another example uh, of Tory fiscal and economic mismanagement and incompetence, which independence gives us the only real alternative to. Douglas Ross. This is a First Minister who has the biggest ever block grant from the United Kingdom government, £41 billion to spend, and criticises every element on it. But the First Minister's plan to escape the temporary issues of the past month is to create permanent chaos with jobs, mortgages, pensions and public services. Rishi Sunak is fixing recent mistakes. The First Minister would wreck our economy for good. Nicola Sturgeon wants permanent austerity. Nicola Sturgeon wants permanent higher taxes. Nicola Sturgeon wants permanent economic chaos. And if she ever gets her way, We've heard today from European officials that Thank she you. would leave us permanently isolated. Even if she won't admit it, the truth is that there is no economic case for the referendum she wants to hold in just 12 months' time. First Minister, Scotland rejected your plans for separation in 2014. Now your new proposals have been torn up by the EU. Isn't it time to drop your obsession and focus on people, businesses and communities right across Scotland? First Minister. It is because I am focusing on people, businesses and communities and what is best for them, their well-being and their prosperity that I want to see Scotland become independent, in charge of our own affairs and our own destiny, not continuing to be dragged down the wrong path by Westminster uh, governments. Uh, that is the reality. Um, and yes, I do want to have a referendum to give the people of Scotland that choice, because it's interesting, isn't it, that Douglas Ross is happy to come to this chamber and debate these matters, but he's not prepared to go and debate them with the people yeah. of Scotland. Yeah. And if Douglas Ross really believed, if Douglas Ross really believed that the Scottish people were going to reject independence, he would be clamouring yeah. for a referendum. Yeah. The fact that he wants to block one, I think, speaks volumes. But you know, presiding officer, I'm not sure uh, we should put much store at all on anything Douglas Ross has to say. Let me. Uh, just reflect on the last few weeks in the life of Douglas Ross, leader, for now, of the Scottish Conservative <laughs> Party. He called on Boris Johnson to resign, then he U-turned, then he called on Boris Johnson to resign again, then he U-turned again. He demanded that I follow uh, the mini-budget, then he applauded Liz Trust for scrapping the mini-budget. He voted for fracking in England. Now I think he welcomes the fact that the fracking ban has been reinstated in England uh, just last week or the week before he said that Liz Truss would win the next general election and days later he welcomed the resignation of Liz Truss. Today he backs Rishi Sunak. Who knows what Douglas Ross's position will be this time next week? <laughs>